It's good to see folks here, Cook County. Uh, no pressure, right? So I'm going to reorganize a little bit. I've got a presentation and I was planning to tell you about kind of the history of this project, where we're at now, and really how you could get involved. But some of you already know how to get involved, and others of you might this not be might not be super relevant. So I'm going to try to uh, kind of reorient to give you kind of the high level why you should care. Does that sound good for folks? Okay, why well, you should care. Um, so uh, Ken got it right. Uh, we've been, I'm, I'm Ryan Wilson. I'm with the Metropolitan Planning Council. We're a nearly 90-year-old organization, and um, we really focus on building equity in the built environment. So we work on things from housing, transportation, um, to community development, and to stormwater and green stormwater infrastructure. And I am an advocate for green stormwater infrastructure in all its forms, but I believe that and deeply in the idea that green and gray infrastructure are the way out of the problems we have right now, which, as Deb said, are urban flooding. It's what we hear from our residents. It's what we hear from businesses and, and property owners um, uh, in the county and around the region. Um, I am I'm not going to be talking about anything in Chicago uh, because the project that we work on is in Cook County, suburban Cook County, outside the city of Chicago. And we have been working with the Nature Conservancy, um, the Illinois chapter and the national team uh, for the last um, since 2016 to both conduct research. We've been working with the district, uh, MWRD, to conduct research and build a case for why um, uh, developers, why municipalities, why residents should care about alternative compliance pathways, which are you know, really pretty boring term. Um, but it is a tool that, uh, that we can use to accelerate investment in infrastructure. And I'm going to try to tell you why that is not important. Um, so there's a huge financing gap between funding gap between what uh, we have and what we can what we need to invest to solve our uh, climate related urban flooding um, issues and uh, so we care about this from NPC standpoint because uh, people are being hurt uh, people their properties are being damaged it's uh, causing uh, pretty serious economic uh, disadvantage, and it's been do and this has been a case. This has been the case for decades. Um, so we're trying to find a tool that uh, can be used to accelerate investment in our region in uh, in uh, stormwater assets, and. Um, uh, you know, we believe that kind of three core things need to be happening right now. One, we need to see more private investment in the space of stormwater management and stormwater infrastructure. Um, two, that investment needs to be directed to places where we have not seen investment um, uh, for quite a while. Disinvested areas, there's a lot of different ways to say this, disproportionately impacted areas, I think is the phrase that um, MWRD uses. Um, and that we need to see a mix of green and gray solutions to, to address these urban flooding problems. Um, so we're really focused on closing the gap and, and believe that stormwater credit trading can be one of those tools um, in doing so. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and cut to the chase. Stormwater trading. What's the concept? Um, it's an idea that we borrowed from the, Depart the, the District of Columbia um, back in 2012. Uh, I wasn't at MPC, but my colleagues and I was working in coalition at the time were starting to look at what was happening in other places. They had seen this concept of uh, stormwater retention credit trading. Um, and essentially, it was a, uh, a regulatory tool where developers could use an off-site uh, compliance pathway um, to purchase a portion of what they are regulated to do in another location in the district. And why that was important was that at the time, the district was building large gray infrastructure pipes in uh, the more urbanized parts of the community. And the less urbanized parts uh, that were where flooding was occurring were, um, I'm sorry, uh, discharges to the Anacostia were, were occurring, were not seeing uh, private and public development. And so this trading opportunity was a, a way of uh, solving the spatial mismatch of where development was occurring and where need, uh, where need was in the community. So great idea. Saw it happening somewhere else. Thought, well, can we translate this to our region? And uh, around 2016, um, built a relationship with the Nature Conservancy, uh, relationship with relationships established with the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District. And by 2017, we were working on and 
publishing the first um, opportunity reports that help to identify, yes, here are the patterns of development in our community. Yes, they line up with many of the other development patterns in our community that reinforce uh, uh, segregation, reinforce equity concerns. And yes, there's an opportunity for using a regulatory uh, alternative compliance pathway tool uh, to help to solve part of that problem. So one of the things that we, you know, the things that we really care about and think are important about stormwater credit trading is it helps to solve the spatial mismatch. It can be a tool for um, increasing the kind of optimized placement of stormwater infrastructure. Um, we believe that it, from MPC standpoint, again, we're really encouraged by the idea that um, it can help to encourage reuse of uh, or, um, uh, reuse of uh, uh, grayfield and, and brownfield developments, more so grayfield than 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 brownfield, but help encourage encourage reuse of of land and redevelopment of land, also urban infill um, uh, as an opportunity. Um, and we'd like to see more green infrastructure built. So the kind of the general timeline, um, concept socialization, policy and regulatory review, is there an opportunity to put in place a project like this? Um, moving into opportunity, uh, kind of demand side, supply side analysis, um, to the point where in 2019, into 2019, uh, mid 2020, uh, we, we initiated the first um, pilot, or the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District, MWRD, initiated the first pilot, um, and we start moved into the pilot phase, the piloting phase of uh, of this project. And we're now two and a half years in, almost three years in. We're getting pretty close to three years in, and uh, we're looking at the last eighteen months of this pilot period. Um, and so I am going to start talking about the next thing that I wanted to tell you about. What have we accomplished? Um, so since that mid-2020 period, uh, we our teams moved into what we call market support or trade support. And so that's involved building out the technology and the stakeholder education to support uh, the pilot that, in, that MWRD is running. So my team spends a lot of time educating developers, municipalities, um, engineers, consultants. If you're any of those and you're not familiar, you work in the region, please reach out to me afterwards if you're watching this video, video later on. I'm still here. My email is still valid. Our website, website is still legitimate. It's www.stormstore.org. You can go ahead and email me now. So um, what have we been doing? We've built out a website. We've been conducting outreach. We've talked to our friends at the Bureau of Economic Development. Uh, thanks, Mohammed and Deb and others. Um, trying to build a pipeline of projects that um, can be trading on this in, in this marketplace. Um, what is the marketplace? Um, in our words, it's the two watershed areas uh, in this map, the blue areas. Uh, the one in the lower screen is the Little Calumet Watershed Planning Area. The one in the kind of central is the Lower Des Plains Watershed Planning Area. Um, and these are two of the kind of six major watersheds where if you are, if you are a developer, you can now by right participate in this um, trading pilot. And what can you do if you are a developer? You can purchase credits. And credits are voluntary uh, capacity that has been built in our community, it's both detention and it's vo volume control, and it's measured in acre feet, um, a very obscure number for most folks. Um, but um, there are two projects that I'd like to talk about. Um, the first of one, uh, which I love this story, is the Village of Niles um, in the Lower Des Plains, uh, or at least partially in the Lower Des Plains watershed. And this is a project that's part of a much larger uh, flood control project um, that was um, built with support from um, MWRD. But if I just was to orient you to this photo, the kind of vertical strip in the center is a road. Um, we we're calling it a Green Street project. It was a project that was being rebuilt as part of this larger uh, flood control project. Um, and uh, but for the existence of this pilot program, it would have not would, would not have become a permeable Green Street project. Um, through, uh, I guess, long term engagement with uh, village engineer uh, and the village, um, they saw an opportunity to leverage this pilot, this trading pilot, um, to build uh, extra voluntary capacity uh, under the street. They converted the 
um, the ornamental paver to a permeable paver and added um, just an incremental uh, budget amount to their project and added aggregate storage under the street. Um, this is a great project. I, well, I love this project because it's the center of a lot of uh, neighborhood or community celebrations um, that occur. And prior to this project, it was much hotter uh, during the summer when these uh, and, and, and spring and fall when these uh, activities were happening. And so now they have um, uh, this kind of rebuilt street, streetscape can, that can be a center place for community celebrations. The second project is in the village of Riverdale. And this is another project that was um, uh, built, it was actually purpose built for the purpose of participating in this trading pilot. Um, it is a project that was uh, supported by the Center for Neighborhood Technology, who we've heard about earlier today, who's also working on the Rain Ready plans we heard about. Um, and this is a project that actually resulted from one of those Rain Ready plans. It was an area that was uh, identified as being problemat uh, problematic, where there was problematic local flooding. Um, and through that plan, um, identified that there was a project opportunity that the Center for Neighborhood Technology um, facilitated, project managed, and this project received project funding from our partners at the Nature Conservancy. Ribbon cutting was last uh, late last summer, I believe. So how can you get started? Um, visit the website www.stormstore.org. You can give me a call. You can send me an email. I'm happy to provide uh, any information you need. Happy to get on a call. If you are a developer, uh, we will talk to you forever. If you are an engineering consultant, we'll present a brown bag in your language. We'll do whatever you need um, to help you understand how you can start to participate in this pilot program. If you're a municipality, we'll come to your village uh, office and talk to your staff about how to get involved. Um, we are here pro bono to help you participate in this project. And, um, and generally what that looks like, if you have a project or you're in the early stages of a development project, um, we'll talk with your development team. Um, if you, we'll talk to your engineering team, whoever that is, to help them understand how they might participate, uh, at what stage in a permit process they want to get involved, um, that will help them with pricing if they are selling credits. Um, but really, any question that you have that can't be answered uh, or you're too scared to talk to the utility, we're here to confidentially talk to you. Um, again, bringing Stormstore to your community, just give me a call. It's super easy. Um, there are currently uh, five credit generating projects um, available for purchase in, uh, in the two pilot watersheds. If you're in the lower Des Plains, you're a little more fortunate to you have more to choose from. If you're in the little Calumet, it's just one. Um, there are a couple other projects we expect to be coming online in the next 18 months. So if you don't see a credit available for purchase, um, then, then know that there might be something that uh, could also serve your uh, serve your project, and so please do reach out to me. Um, so, I was not planning to take questions, but if we have time, I want to serve the people in this audience, and I tried to adjust the presentation to to make it a little faster for you to get out of here. So, any questions for folks from folks? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Is this the idea yeah, yeah. That impact you're mitigating or is this maybe step three where where agencies can create extra for sale? Like they can create yeah. the credit? Yeah. Sort of? And then somebody else needs to buy it for profit. Yeah, it's really it's we use we use the wetland mitigation banking as a that is kind of the gateway description. Um, but because of the way that we have a regional utility, municipalities are serviced by uh, our regional utility. Uh, they're actually co-permittees, and so they're actually on the the stormwater management permits. But but municipalities can build uh, voluntary capacity, and they can sell it. And the concept is that it potentially is you know a lot of our municipalities for green infrastructure projects are getting funding. Maybe it comes from the state, maybe it comes from the county, maybe it's even philanthropic in other places. That money can uh, be used for construction, and then the sale can be you know that revenue could be uh, kind of recycled back into project for maintenance or operations, or in the case of uh, Franklin Park, which was one of the first projects piloted, actually um, kind of recycled back into the next green infrastructure project. And that that concept is one that you know we hope will spread. Um, Mayor um, 
uh, Mayor Barrett Peterson in Franklin Park has really been kind of a you know a first mover and visionary in how you might use tools like this to continue to leverage tools like this to invest in more uh, green assets you know in in your community. So, other questions? Well, thank you for your patience. What are you going to do? Visit our website www.stormstore.org. Send me an email. Give me a call. Talk to me afterwards. Thanks for your time.